This was the final question from a recent GCSE exam of which my American understanding is that this is basically like the SAT or the ACT. This is a test you take that has some bearing on whatever college or university you go to. It's the math level one, and so it shouldn't be a terribly advanced question, and yet we're supposed to find the area of this shaded region, which is obviously not a normal kind of shape. So I wanna walk through how we would find the area of that shaded region, even if we didn't know just randomly something like the area formula for a lens, which would come in really handy here. In fact, that's probably the approach you've seen most often if you have seen other videos on this question. If we can just find the area of each one of these kind of circular portions that are combined together, which again we call a lens, for I think obvious reasons. If you did know how to find the area of these lenses, then the question actually is relatively straightforward. It's clearly a composite area problem where we're going to take the total area of that circle in the middle and we're gonna subtract away two of those lenses. So again, if we could calculate the area of these lenses, we would simply add them together, subtract from 16 pi. The radius of all these circles is the same four, and so that's where we're getting a total area for a single circle of 16 pi. And then that would be the answer. Whatever's left over would be the shaded region. But again, presuming that you do not have the area of a lens formula memorized, how would you approach a question like this? I'm gonna suggest rather than trying to figure out the area of those two lenses and then subtracting that away from the total area of the circle, let's focus in on just the top half of this shaded region. If you connect the points, you can see that this actually makes an equilateral triangle. Again, the radius of these circles is four, and so this length has to be four, this length has to be four, and it's relatively easy to show that there must be six such triangles that look like this, which means each one of them at its central angle is taking up a sixth of your 360 degrees. That's going to be a 60 degree included angle, which again is how you can end up showing that this must be an equilateral triangle. Knowing that it's an equilateral triangle though, we have a kind of interesting relationship come out here. This kind of one bulge out area is offset by these two bulge in areas. And in fact, what's going on is that it's offset precisely. Each one of these has an equal area. So in fact, two of these would, in a sense, cancel each other out. If you imagine taking this piece and rotating it around, you can see that what we would be left with is the equilateral triangle minus this kind of bulging in area here. And so I'm going to suggest that's how we approach answering this question. Let's find the area of that equilateral triangle, the area of that one half of the lens. We're going to sub Tract, because obviously it's going into the equilateral triangle. It's taking away our area in some sense. And then we're going to double that because clearly this is symmetrical with that area on the bottom. The area of the equilateral triangle is the easiest part here, so let's start there. To find the area of a triangle, of course, it's easiest if we know the base and the height of that triangle. In this case, we do know the base because again, it has to be an equilateral triangle. The only thing that leaves for us to figure out is the height of the equilateral triangle. Height by definition, or an altitude sometimes it's called, is going to meet our base at a right angle. And so in fact, we can see this creates two 30, 60, 90 right triangles. You probably know there's a special relationship for the 30, 60, 90 right triangle, where across from the 30 degree side is going to be half of our total base, which makes sense because we're just splitting this triangle in half. Using Pythagorean theorem, or perhaps you just have memorized what's across from the 60 degree angle, we can say that the height of that triangle is two root three. Putting that together, we can say the area of our triangle is one half times the base, which is four, times the height, which is two root three, and so we get a total area of four root three. And again, that's just the equilateral triangle. If this were a multiple choice question, or if we only needed to roughly say what the area was, we're basically done at this point. Four times root three is about 6.8, so our answer clearly is a little smaller than 6.8 times two, because again, we have two of these different shapes. But in this case, it's not a multiple choice question, so we do actually have to go ahead and figure out this missing area. That's the part that we wanna subtract away. To do this, we actually wanna look at a different equilateral triangle. We are going to pay attention to this sector of that circle because the area of that sector minus that equilateral triangle, which you'll notice is the same equilateral triangle, so we've already done that work, is going to be the area of that kind of bulging in portion, that half of a lens. We've already said this is an equilateral triangle. We can figure out that that's 60 degrees or one sixth the total area of the circle. And so this section here, including the lens itself, has to have an area of 16 pi, 
that's the total area for the circle, times 60 out of 360. That is one sixth of the total circle. This ends up being 16 pi over six, or if we simplify, eight pi over three. Now again, the area of the lens that we're interested in is actually going to be that sector of the circle, eight pi divided by three, minus the equilateral triangle, which again, we already found. We said that that area was four root three. And now we have everything we need to be able to state the area of the shaded region. Again, as we compensate for the ways that the different shapes fit together, what we want is twice the total area of that triangle minus that half lens, which means that what we're computing is two times four root three minus eight pi over three, which itself is subtracted away by four root three again. Keeping in mind that we basically need to distribute this negative sign, what we end up with is two times four root three minus eight pi over three plus four root three. We've got some radicals that go together here, four root three plus four root three is eight root three. And so finally, we want two times eight root three minus eight pi over three. Two times eight root three is 16 root three, and two times negative eight pi over three is negative 16 pi over three. And so there you have it, that shaded region, that kind of bulging out, bulging in equilateral triangle sort of area, ends up being 16 root three minus 16 pi over three. What are some principles we can take away from this question for the future? Fundamentally, this is a composite area question. And so when you see composite area questions, you want to start dividing up and labeling any parts of your figure. What makes this one a little bit weird is the fact that the things that make up the composite area aren't polygons, aren't circles, aren't even necessarily sectors of circles, but instead are these things called lenses, these concave in and concave out kinds of shapes. Finding the area you using such shapes is more difficult, but again, fundamentally, it is simply addition and subtraction of different kinds of areas. The other thing I'd say here is that because we're dealing with circles, particularly circles that have all the same radius, we wanna take advantage of a lot of symmetry and a lot of congruence. In this case, we calculated the area of just the upper half of the shape and then doubled that to find the overall area. We were also able to basically rotate certain puzzle pieces around to cancel out as much as we could ahead of time and keep our calculations as simple as they could be. Although again, in this case it is a pretty weird question and we still had to do quite a bit of work. I hope that was helpful to you. Like and subscribe if so. If you have other questions GCSE or otherwise that you would like me to take a look at put them in the comments down below and otherwise I'll see y'all next time.